Uh, ministers, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, everyone uh, listening and following live on YouTube, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening wherever you are. Welcome to this uh, launch here from Paris, the launch of the 2020 uh, OECD Digital Economy Outlook. I'm really delighted to open today's event to showcase the OECD's work on a topic whose relevance has grown immensely in the last months, uh, the digital economy. Over the next hour, we will hear about the digital economy, uh, how it's been evolving, uh, evolving and the implica implications for a global recovery from uh, COVID. We will hear from two uh, OECD countries about their digital policy responses to the pandemic. COVID-19 continues uh, to cause uh, tremendous human suffering with its uh, impact permeating every facet of our lives. The toll on the global economy is also severe, of course. But digital technologies have helped our economies and our societies avoid a complete standstill. And there's no doubt that they will continue to transform the way we live, the way we work. The Zoom boom, as demonstrated by the format of, uh, of today's discussion, is just one example of the COVID-induced digital acceleration that we've witnessed over these past months. Widespread connectivity has allowed many businesses and individuals to adapt to the crisis. Children with uh, at-home internet access began attending class remotely. Many firms adopted digital business models to maintain operations and preserve revenue flows. Even before the pandemic, we saw governments increasingly putting the digital transformation at the center of their policy agendas, including devoting more attention to emerging uh, technologies such as AI, uh, blockchain, and 5G infrastructure. That paid dividends for sure, as many countries around the world have been able to use such technologies to learn more about the virus, uh, accelerate the search for a vaccine, and track the development of the pandemic, just to uh, mention a few examples. Yet while the pandemic is further accelerating uh, an already rapid digital transformation, it's also revealed that we're really just getting started on this journey. COVID-19 has raised the bar for digital inclusion. It runs the risk of bringing new challenges and opening new divides. The new OECD Digital Economy Outlook shines a spotlight on the increasingly important role of digital technologies and communications uh, infrastructures in our daily lives. It considers how the pandemic is amplifying opportunities and challenges from the digital transformation and reinforces the link between digitalization and economic recovery. Today, uh, OECD's Director for Science, Technology and Innovation, uh, Andrew Wyckoff, will present the highlights of the digital economy outlook. Following Andy's uh, brief remarks, we'll hear interventions by four esteemed panelists. Paola Pisano, Minister of Technological Innovation and Digitalization from Italy. Ki Yong Choi, Korea's uh, Minister of Science and ICT, it's a video address. And then uh, He Kwon Yong, Director General for the Korea's International Cooperation Bureau at the Ministry of Science and ICT. And then Deepak Mishra, a lead economist at the World Bank and the co-director uh, for the World Development Report 2016 on Internet and Development. The OECD experts behind the digital economy outlook will then be available for questions following the panel. So please do submit questions uh, anytime uh, via the Q&A function on Zoom, accessible via the bottom, uh, bottom panel of your screen. Colleagues from uh, the OECD uh, Secretariat will be moderating the chat today. Please feel free to state your affiliation when asking questions. I have to say, as already said, uh, the uh, webinar is also being live streamed on YouTube and it will be available also on the OECD website after the session. So I'm looking forward to a lively discussion and it's my pleasure now to invite Andy to take the floor. Andy. Thank you, Deputy Secretary General Knudsen. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, present this year's, let's see if I can do it. Uh, well, maybe I will just do it this, this way. Uh, it doesn't seem to be working for me perfectly. And that's the new normal, it seems like, with the year of uh, COVID. Um, let me just quickly outline that this year's edition of the uh, OECD Digital Economy Outlook is the third edition. It provides a holistic overview of converging trends, policy development, and data on both supply and demand 
of the digital uh, economy. Not surprisingly, as Deputy Sec Secretary General has said, it will have a special focus on how the COVID-19 pandemic is amplifying opportunities and challenges uh, from the digital tra transformation. While it may be too soon to pass judgment on exactly what the impact of COVID-19 will be on digitalization, will it be a one-off or will it have lasting effects? It's highly likely that some changes will last, but the question is at what level? The publication includes a short supplement on digital transformation in the age of COVID, about building resilience and bridging the divides. It also contains 92 different indicators, all of which have stat links to the underlying data, which provides more data for people who want it. The 2017, in 2017, OECD launched uh, the Going Digital Project. This is a very large undertaking across the OECD to study the digital transformation underway. Under the auspices of the project, the OECD developed an integrated policy framework, which you see here today, to examine the digital transformation through seven themes affecting the economy and society. These, in fact, are the main themes as well as the 2020 digital economy outlook, along with a spotlight on emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and blockchain. The 2020 edition of the, of the digital economy outlook is a comprehensive volume, compiling data from 37 member countries as well as our partner countries. Now, I cannot do this justice in just 10 minutes time, but I can try to capture the main trends that it identifies, and I'll quickly go through these. But number one is in fact uh, improving connectivity. And uh, where we've seen over time a, a vast improvement in the way businesses and individuals are, adapt to, uh, uh, are able to adapt to the crisis um, with digital technologies, as Deputy Secretary General Knudsen just said. But What's important here is the digital divide persists. These are persistent gaps in access, use, skills between regions, localities, and countries, between age and gender groups, between different sectors and firms of different sizes. It puts a spotlight now on the digital divide. It shifts it from being maybe what was a boutique, more techie issue to a central macroeconomic issue akin to what I would call you know, adequate housing. Inherent in this is the need for trust. Uh, it's only through trust that we can reap the benefits of digitalization and our increasing reliance on these digital solutions, as well as new emerging tech technologies. All these are adding to the urgencies of around privacy and digital security. And finally, the impact of COVID-19. The pandemic has accelerated the digital transformation, compressing in some cases would have been years of change into mere weeks. Things like telework and distance learning have sprung out into the, so that everyone is using them in a very short period of time. But these shifts again have accentuated the gaps that exist and have raised the bar of what we consider digital inclusion. And progress needs to step up and begin to mirror the changes we see going on in the economy and society. I'll give you some examples of these trends before concluding with some key messages. In recent years, the number of telecommunications subscriptions measured by access paths continues to grow. In particular, mobile connections, the top blue line in this, this figure, are growing at a faster pace than fixed broadband connections. Key drivers behind this have been the widespread adoption of smartphones, higher mobile broadband speeds, and the evolution of wireless networks and more commercial offers that offer unlimited data packages. This has made people much more dependent on them, has unleashed a lot of interesting applications, and with it, a virtuous circle for demand for higher quality networks. And COVID-19 has only added to this. Some RAP operators have experienced as much as a 60 to 90% increase in internet traffic growth compared to before the crisis. Meanwhile, fixed lines like telephone lines will continue the long-term decline and are increasingly replaced by broadband uh, fixed lines.
moving to the next slide. Thank you. But in spite of these, these improvements, important gaps remain. For, for example, in fiber, we find fiber is critical for advancing connectivity. It can create uh, both faster access speed, but also plays an important role in transferring data, what we call backhaul. And it's essential for moving to the next phase, such as 5G. And yet it only makes up one quarter of the fixed broadband connections in the OECD. As you can see from this figure, they're in incredibly different situations that prevail across OECD countries. For example, in Korea and Japan, the percentage of fiber and total fixed broadband connections was, was around 80%. Why the share is below 5% in countries such as Germany, Austria, UK, Israel, Belgium, and, and, and Greece. Other gaps uh, are evident in terms of the sizes of firms, both in terms of connectivity as shown here in the top figure where the black line represents the difference between large and small firms, as well as the use of specific information communication technologies like big data analysis, which is shown in the bottom figure, or even cloud computing. As digitalization is transforming business models, production and competitiveness, these gaps become all the more critical and are important for policy to step into and try to reduce. If we, could. If we are looking at individual use, we see gaps as well. With, with data indicating significant gaps by age, education, and income, as we see in this figure. This figure shows that in some countries, these gaps are very big and virtually non-existent in other countries, such as in Scandinavia. Across OECD countries, on average, about 96% of the individuals from the top 25% income households, the, the triangle here, used the internet in 2019. But the share dropped to 74% amongst those in the bottom 25% income households, a gap of almost 22 percentage points. If we look at online activities, which vary by their sophistication from sending emails through online purchases and use of the cloud for job searching and online sales, we see important differences in activities between countries. Over 80% of individual users send emails on average, but only about 40% uh, use it for online purchases. And we see big gaps between countries are found in activities such as e-government access and online purchases, with some countries below 20%, while others at 80%. An obvious trend in this year's digital economy outlook is the impact of COVID-19 on digitalization. One aspect of this uptick of technologies, which we're using today, uh, we see a leap in the use of certain online communication platforms, particularly as the lockdown hit, as you can begin to see in these two figures around March of 2020. This is the result of massive numbers of people and organizations who switched to telework using tools like these for the first time. And as this figure shows, video conferencing applications, Zoom, Skype, and online tools like Trello, Slack, have experienced marked increases in use in countries for which data are available. In this case, France, Hungary, and Poland. Now, such tools help teams share information, coordinate, and collaborate, and have been essential for keeping the economy and society going during this period of confinement. Many of us have experienced teleworking since the beginning of the year, which is a direct impact of COVID. As you can see from the chart in this slide, and I look forward to hearing Minister Pisano in a second, changes in business models affect all industries, but naturally to a different extent, and not all sectors have the same teleworking potential. We were able to get very good data from Statistics Italy that shows that teleworking during the lockdown um, actually reached almost its potential across many firms as, as measured uh, in some sectors 
uh, such as the blue bar here. And moreover, there's been a, why we've seen a decrease as uh, the lockdown eased a bit between the triangle and the circle here. Again, it was far above where we were at the pre-COVID levels. Again, this differs significantly across sectors, but it's an important indication that even after the COVID pandemic passes, things will have changed uh, on a more permanent basis. Just to conclude with some key messages, um, coming out of the uh, digital economy outlook 2020, first, COVID is impacting us all in similar ways. But when you dig down into looking at individual countries, uh, individuals themselves and firms, each has a different experience. And it means that we need to prepare uh, for a reaction to these that will be different across countries and firms. Second, countries have begun to step up to the plate. Uh, they start to adapt their, their policy environments with national digital strategies being, being developed. What's important is they're not too narrow. They need to be broad enough because as I've said before, this is enveloping and consuming the whole economy and hence needs a coordinated effort across the government. Third, to ensure the economic recovery, we must understand that the digital economy is integral to the economy. And this needs to be reflected in strategy and policy. The digital economy needs to be put front and center. Thank you, and I really look forward to our speakers today sharing their perspective on the digital transformation, COVID-19, and the economic recovery. Thank you very much.